Hi guys. Um, I hope you're doing well today. This sermon came about. Um, this sermon is called the bones. Um, it came about. Um, I was watching the Mass Singer, which is one of two of my favorite shows. My favorite favorite show is The Voice. And my other favorite show is, is The Masked Singer. It's where celebrities dress up in masks and sing and you have to guess who they are. Anyway, um, one of the characters on The Masked Singer um, sang this song. And I love this song called The Wounds by, Ma Ma by Marin Morris. Oh. When I was listening to it just now, I'm like, so many things come to my mind when it, uh, when it comes on. Because basically, it talks about the bones of a relationship, the foundation of a relationship. And I was like, not only a romantic relationship where the, where the song is based around, but... Um, a relationship with God. I was thinking of our relationship with Christ and how many times the outward house of our relationship looks good, but like we raise our hands, we say hallelujah, we do all that stuff in church. But when it comes to, and we reach out to God when when we need help or what we need money or whatever to send people to send relationships to send romantic partners or whatever but inside the bones of our relationship the foundation of our relationship is not good so that's what i want to talk about today um I was also thinking of uh, the scripture about the parable that Jesus told about um, a man that built his house upon the, upon the sand and the winds blew when the rain came and the sand and the house just um, came right down. And then there was another man who built his house upon um, a firmer foundation, but it still, um, the, the, the rain came and, and the floods came and blew it over, but the, the, um, and then there was a third man who built his house upon the rock. And the rains came and the floods came and, and that house kept standing. And some and a lot of times we think build your house upon Jesus and whatever. That's one thing. But I was thinking about this and I was thinking some people um think that they're building their house upon Jesus. But it's really not. Um, I've been in this situation too where you think an area of, of your life is built around Jesus. But it's really um, built around you and what you want and your desires. And, and when that area is tested you fall because it's not built on Jesus and, and your your pastor or your worship leader is not there when you really need um, when you really need firming up um, when your foundation is tested um, they're not there to pump you up and and I find oh no I figured in my short life that a lot of people worship and they praise and they maybe even read their Bible every day. But their foundation, the bones of their foundation is not 
uh, firm. And I was also thinking of, of Paul when he talked about how when the word comes into people, some people it goes uh, in one ear and out the other. And um, some people it stays for a while, but then they get distracted and then it goes. And some people the word remains. And that because their bones are good. Um, I was thinking of all these things. I was even thinking of the skeletal system. Um, but for, when you look at the human body, every major organ, um, every major part of the body has bones covering it. And if the bones in the skeletal system aren't good, it doesn't matter how much makeup you put on, it doesn't matter how you dress it up, it doesn't matter how you look, it doesn't matter the color of your skin, it doesn't matter anything. You could have flawless skin, you could have flawless uh, hair, you can have flawless makeup. But if your bones are weak, um, you'll be in real tr trouble. My doctor um, put me on a few years ago, he put me on, uh, um, I have a bone doctor because my other doctor was concerned about osteoporosis, which is a, a, a disease of the bone. And I said to him, I'm, I'm third, I'm, Back, back then I was 35, I said, I'm 35, why do I need to worry about this? He's like, you don't really need to worry about it now, but it's preventative. If we don't get you on vitamins now, you'll be on bone medication later because, because you don't walk and because your intake is kind of low, your bones are weak, so we need to give you vitamins that can help you. And a lot of people, a lot of um, younger people say, I don't need that Christian thing now, I'll worry about it when I get older. But you may not think you need it now, but you do, like, you can't wait until you're 75 to, or in your, like, 90s and you're on deathbed to serve the Lord. He said, now is the accepted time of salvation. And, and if, if your bones are weak, if the foundation is weak. I've never broken a bone, but it takes, um, I've heard about six to eight weeks to heal when you break a bone because it takes time even when the doctor said it, said it to, um, to get back to normal. And I think a lot of times our spiritual bones are weak. They're malnourished. So what we need to do is get our spiritual um, vit um, magnesium and our spiritual calcium um, to make our bones strong. And what are our spiritual magnesium and calcium? Well, the first thing is the Word of God. Um, I um, you guys might find this, this really odd as me as a preacher, but sometimes I find the Bible a hard thing to dig through. And it's not because I don't like the Word, it's not because I don't think the Word is everything, it's things that we stand on, it's because it seems so daunting. And what I learned to do is take it in parts. If you can only um, 
memorize a verse a day or a verse a week or something, do it. If you find a Bible teacher you like and you want to um, look up their scriptures, do it. If you want to follow a Bible plan, do it. If you want to say, you know, a scripture you know, do it. Anything you can do to get the word of God inside of you, do it. If you want to listen, to, if you hate reading and there's like, you just, you're not a reader or reading for you is hard. Maybe you have a disability like me or, or your eyes are going. There are audio versions of the Word of God. And, you know, there are Bible reading plans for every, every skill level, whether you've been a Christian for 50 years or, or five months. There is something for everyone. And there are free sites there. The best site I've, I've found for the Word of God is BibleGateway.com. BibleGateway.com. B-I-B-L-E-G-A-T-E-W-A-Y.com. So that's BibleGateway.com. And they also have... Uh, reading plans, they have everything on that site. So whether you're a beginner or whether you are a seasoned Christian, you can do it there. And there's also Ustream with different versions of the Bible of the Bible for those of you with cell phones. Use uh not oh you version Sorry, not Ustream. Uversion is the Bible app. Co a common Bible app that people use. I don't know if they have study plans or things. But I know they have all kinds of different versions of the Bible. And so do Bible Gateway. That will make your bones strong. That, when you put the Word of God in you, it comes out of you when you most need it. But without the word to draw from, you won't have anything anything in your arsenal when you need it. And your study of the word has to go past Sunday morning. Even if you can do a, a verse a week and, and study that verse, or you know, if there's a preach, if there's a preacher you connect to, and you want to look up his ser his or her sermon, uh, her his or her sermon texts and study that, you can do that. Just anything you can do to get the word inside you, so that will strengthen your bones of the relationship with God. And also, what strengthens your bones, next thing, is prayer. And prayer is, is um, sometimes a hard thing for some people because they're like, I can't pray like my pastor in church. He's so, you know, he or she is so... Awesome. They use big words, and they. I can't do that. Um, and I'm here to tell you something. You don't have to do that. <coughs> what I think, what I can like in the prayer is, uh, what I like in prayer too is um. A conversation with God like you just have to have a conversation a daily conversation some people carve out time for the Lord they have their Bible and whatever and then they pray and that's their time with the Lord but I tend to believe 
that time with the Lord should never end. Prayer should be a consistent, um, a consistent part of your life. Just like you brush your uh, teeth every morning, comb your hair, prayer should be that consistent part of your life. And it doesn't have to be long. It can just be like, Lord, here I am today. Um, is there anything you want me to know? My prayers are very funny. You would think praying in church is one thing and praying in front of people is one thing. But when the Lord and I are hanging out at home, I'd be like, Lord, Lord, is there anything you want me to know today? That's what I say. I'm like, Lord, is there anything you want me to know today? And then I stop and then I listen. And prayer is not always, um, it's never like just a one-sided conversation. Lord, I need this and Lord, I need that. Yes, he's here to supply all your needs. But more than that, he wants a relationship with you desperately. And yeah, when you, when you pray, you just have to be yourself. And you know, um, you know, when you start to pray, it may seem weird for you, like you're talking to an individual person. But the more you do it, is the more um, comfortable you get with it. And you'll just say, wow. And you, there's no set time to pray. You, c you can uh, pray any time of the day or forever long of the day. But the most important thing is, beloved, he wants to spend time with you. He wants to get to know you. He wants to be involved in your life. You know, it's kind of funny. I said, uh, when you hear people say, the Lord spoke to me, the Lord spoke to me, and you're like, wow, I wish God would speak to me. Well, he can speak to you. He probably is speaking to you. But without a prayer life, you're not hearing that he's speaking to you. And the way to get that, to get your spiritual ears in tune, is just to start. You just start praying, telling him, telling him your thoughts, telling him your feelings. And if you don't feel comfortable saying it loud, you can have a prayer book or get to know how he speaks to you. Get to know how he communicates with you. Because his, he, the thing about the Lord is he knows his children. He knows who they are. He knows where they are. He knows, he knows what struggles they're having. He knows what, you know, he knows what their issues are. And if you can understand that he knows all, it'll just, but if you come to him in prayer, just not believing and ask him, if you just start talking to him, things will just change in your life. It will, it may be gradual, but it'll become easier, easier. It'll become like a friend that you just, um, that you just talk to and whatever, and he'll begin to speak to you. You just have to get into what I call the rhythm of prayer, like just making it a, da a daily part of who you are. And it's so funny, when I talk to God, you would think I was talking to another person. I say, when I'm scanning Netflix, I'm like, uh, Lord, what movie do you want me to watch today? He would say a movie, and I would say, no, I don't feel like watching that one. And he would say, yes, I want you to watch that one. Anyway, he usually wins. Um, and sometimes he, he would be like, you choose. And it's not this spooky, you know, you know, I'm there kind of, 
prayer. It's just that, it's just that, Lord, I know that I'm, I know you know I'm a work in progress and I can strip myself in front of you. I can show you where I hurt. I can show you my scars. I can tell you when I'm mad. I can tell you when I'm sad. I can tell you when I'm angry. And when you develop that kind of relationship with God, the bones that I'm talking about will strengthen. And another way to get the bones um, to strengthen is what we call worship. And we often think of worship as singing, but it's not really. Singing is an aspect of worship, but it's not worship. Worship is in the word worship. Worship. Your 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 ascribing worth to God. So basically, in worship, you're compliment you're complimenting God. Like you know, when you or you're you're showing gratitude. Um. So you're you're. You're saying, Lord, you're worthy, or you're ascribing worth to what, what, what he's done and who he is. And when you're, um, or you're, you're thanking him for just being who he is, and you're telling him that you love him, and you're telling him all these wonderful things, that's all worship is. Now, songs can be a vehicle to enter to the presence of God, but a song in itself is not worship. And that's why I laugh when they say uh, praise and worship and it's only like four songs and we're done. Where you have a ascribed worship God at all, you just sang a couple songs. And also, it can bring you into the presence of God, but but singing is not um, worship in itself. It's a vehicle for worship. Dancing is not worship in itself. It's a it's a vehicle for worship. Worship really starts and ends with your words to God, like Lord, I love you. Lord, you are awesome, and and. You can say, Lord, you're pretty great, or you, you are more than great. And in worship, you, you get healing. You get restoration. You get all that stuff. Because the number one thing that I find worship creates is intimacy. And without um, intimacy, you don't have good bones because you are not intimate. It's like it's like a relationship. You can't make a baby without without sexual intimacy. You can't have a good relationship without communicative intimacy. You can't have a good relationship without a foundation and really getting to know the person. A lot of people think Sex is intimacy. No, sex is a tool for intimacy, for physical intimacy. It's not intimacy in itself. Intimacy is when the person sees into you, you see into them, and you can pour into that broken and intimate place that they only show to you. That intimacy, not sex. Sex is an outpouring and a way to express intimacy like like I was saying um, like I was saying spiritually for a, like a song is not intimacy in a spirit like a song is not worship in 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 a spiritual a spiritual intimacy and you need communication. So far, um, same thing goes for sex in an intimate relationship. I know this 
because not that I'm married or anything, but um, God, I asked the Lord um, about this, and we we talked about uh, sexual intimacy and marriage. We've talked about all that, and we, because I. Because I've asked him questions like that. So even though I'm not married, I I can be geared up with tools because of what he said to me about a subject. Um, and that's what a relationship with God does. He will tell you his secrets. If you get the bones of a relationship right, if you get... Uh, um, his word, if you get prayer, and if you get worship, he will start revealing to you his, his innermost secrets, and he will take from you what he doesn't, what you don't want, and you won't, what he doesn't want, and you won't even realize that he's taken it from you. That's and you'll find yourself just not desiring it, desiring it anymore. And when you fall, you'll you'll be easier on yourself. I find, I think a lot of pe reasons why people struggle with bringing stuff to Christ is that they're not intimate to know Him enough. Like, they only come to Christ when things are bad or their marriage is bad or whatever they pray they pray about it and they leave God out of their lives but if you work on the bones of your relationship with Christ it will just create a space where he heals you in places that you don't even know needs to be healed or he takes away stuff that you don't even ask him to take away and when you do ask him for stuff, he reassures you. He tells you not to worry. And he tells you not to fret. And he tells you ways to deal with stuff that you're struggling with that other people just don't know. Like, that all comes with um, intimacy and time. So just start working beloved on the bones of your relationship and I'm going to I'm here to tell you this right now it will not be perfect nobody's perfect you won't pray all the time you won't uh, worship all the time you'll get mad still you'll do all that stuff still because you're fighting with the old man but you'll have something um, to uh, when you fall, you'll have someone or something to get you back up. It won't be a despair thing. And when he corrects you, uh, when the bones are good and he corrects you and takes that stubbornness from you, um, you will, it, he'll correct you so gently you won't even realize he'll correct you he'll be correcting you and he'll slowly take that desire away from you and you will struggle still because you're you're um, a spirit having a human your experience you're a spiritual being having a human experience you will struggle still but the struggle won't be as hard when you come to God only when you're in trouble or you pray once a day that's not enough to develop a relationship. You re um, I know for myself that I needed to develop the bones. Am I good at worship all the time? No. Am I good at reading my Bible every day? I try, but no. But overall, the bones are good. And are there, is there stuff that I need to work on? Surely yes. But all I know is the bones of our relationship, the communication in our relationship, the prayer in our relationship, it's good.
and he can check me, you know, he can check me anytime he wants. And you know, when the bones are good, you don't, you don't have to worry about if people's bones were good, I would argue we wouldn't have to say, uh, Lord, take my heart, take this. Because lovingly, he would just, um, he would just lovingly uh, caress us and take it. And you don't even realize that he's taking it. You're giving it free of your free will. But he's also taking it at the same time. And you don't even realize that he's changing that part of you. You didn't even ask. Uh, for him to change up for you. He just did because the bones of your relationship is good. So guys, I hope that you're doing well. Um, thank you for listening to this sermon. I really appreciate it. Take care. When the bones are good, the rest don't matter. And the pain could peel if that's good job. Let it rain. You and I will stay the same. When there ain't a crack in the foundation. You and I, whatever storm we're facing, will. Flow right over if we and we stay put. The house won't fall when the bones are good. When the bones are good, the rest don't matter. When the pain could feel, the clutch could try to let it rain. You and I will stay the same. When there ain't a crack in the foundation. You and I, whatever storm will face in the, and what you and you and I, whatever storm will face it, will fall right over if we stay put. The house won't fall. The bones are good when the bones are good. I love that song. I will I will put it on uh, right below or above this video when you actually I think I'll put it in the description so give I actually I'll, I'll post it right next to this video, so. Or I'll post it above or be below this video. I wish it was like the old school days where I w would play a song, but uh, YouTube, Facebook and stuff don't let you do that anymore because of copyright. Well, it sucked, but what are you gonna do? <laughs> uh, anyway, guys, I'll see you later. Look for the video. I'll post it right now. The YouTube video. So watch it before or after this sermon. If you haven't heard this song. This song is amazing. Uh, I'll talk to you later guys. Bye. Strengthen your bones. Strong bones is a strong body. Maybe that's why parts of the body of Christ are so weak because our bones are not strong. We don't do the three things that I mentioned. So strengthen your bones so you can fight off the devil and the enemy. Last, the, the, de the devil and his wicked devices, I should say. Last night, I went through a circumstance. I won't go through the um, 
to what the circumstance was, but it was a real hard circumstance. And I've been through circumstances like this before, and usually I crumble and whatever, but last night I spoke the name of Jesus, I spoke the word, I'm like, you will not overtake me anymore. And I said, in the name of Jesus to, to the circumstance. And it fled just like that. So when the bones are good and you need, and you need the word, it comes out of you. Stuff that you don't even know was in there. So strengthen your bones. And remember, I will post the video. Bye. When the bones are good, the rest don't matter. And the pain could be, could peel, the glass could shatter. When it rains, you and I will stay the same. When there ain't a crack in the foundation, you and I, whatever storm we're facing, will blow right over if we stay put. The house won't, the house don't fall when the bones are good. When the bones are good, the rest don't matter. When the paint could peel, the glass could shatter. Let it rain. You and I will stay the same. When there ain't a crack in the foundation, you and I, whatever storm we're facing, we'll blow right over if we stay put. The house don't fall when the bones are good. Have a good day.